Texas Congressman George Santos says he will not run for re-election. Santos made the announcement yesterday in the wake of a scathing House ethics report that found substantial evidence Santos may have broken federal criminal law. What did the report find? What happens next? Joining us, Robert Simon, former Democratic congressional candidate, Democratic National Committee representative from New York. You told us so. <laughs> when you were running against George Santos, you sounded the alarm. You must feel so frustrated to hear this right You know, now. Roseanne, let me tell you something. Snoop Dogg giving up smoke is giving up smokes is a bigger story than George Santos not running for re-election. <laughs> he was never running for re-election. He didn't have the support. He didn't have any, cre any credibility. He was, he was done from the start. So, I mean, you, when you were running against him, sure. you were talking about possible financial... Oh, we sounded the alarm, and the, many me people in the media acknowledged it. Uh, and in fact, we were the only, we were the, he's been running for Congress for four years. We were the only ones that took him on. But, but you didn't know the extent of it. Well, nobody, I think, really did. And it took the federal government and it took the Ethics Committee to get the financial records to see the level of corruption. You know, part of the problem is, you know, the Federal Election Commission is so understaffed, there's no one who can check, fact check the reports that are filed, do the investigative work that has to be done. And, you know, on our local media, that's the front lines of our defense of our democracy. And even though many tried, they came back and said, we just don't have the staff or the personnel to, to dig deeper. Some did, however. North Shore leaders certainly did. Blank Slate Media, some folks at Newsday tried as well, raised some, raised some issues. And we're taking a closer look at some of these allegations now. I mean, this ethics committee really has laid it all out there. We're talking yeah. about using campaign funds for things like trips to Ferragamo or a subscription to certain websites. Things Only uh, fans. Only, Only fans. fans, exactly. It's an adult website. An adult website, yeah. things uh, along those lines. What do you make of what you saw I in this report now? You know, it's important to remember, this is not some master criminal. He's a petty anti-hood. He's a common thief. And the bottom line to it all is the House Ethics Committee just didn't come up with this the past couple of days. They've had this information for a very long time. But they were so desperate to try to protect their majority and the Republican majority that, that frankly, they weren't prepared to move. It took public pressure, it took congressional pressure from some Republican members, too, to finally demand some accountability. And that's what's so critical here. Because, you know, it sounds preposterous. It's almost comical in a sense. But when we realize there are 770,000 people living in the 3rd Congressional District who have not had a representative in Congress, not had an advocate for them on committees. I, mean, I personally get calls from constituents all the time. And we know that, obviously, there's the criminal investigation that's sure. ongoing as well. Several charges, potentially decades in prison. And then we have the political side of it, which is this House Ethics Report. Do you see those two things not combining, but being linked? You know, I mean, a, will, will what happened with this ethics report influence the potential criminal trial? Well, you know, it's a very interesting question you bring up. A Republican member of Congress told me two months ago that they were planning to release the ethics report in November, the intent being to force him to finally cut a deal with the federal government. Now, I don't know what kind of deal he can get. He certainly should serve jail time. But if he's expelled from Congress, then he has no leverage for any bargaining with the federal government. And quite frankly, I don't even know if the federal government wants to cut a deal with him. But that was the strategy behind one Republican member of Congress told me, uh, that, and it's not been out there, that this was, this was the strategy to put this report out, and maybe he will cut a deal between now and, Interesting. Now and after Thanksgiving. It's all about bargaining, I mean, because he is facing very serious criminal charges. Sure, he's facing at least 20 years. And frankly, that's the very least of what he should get. Okay? I mean, it's, it's worse than just the crimes itself. If he defrauded our democracy and he deprived our, the citizens of Nassau and Queens, my neighbors, our constituents, are their voice in Congress and the help they need. I get calls about veterans' aid, people need senior care, uh, you know, small business needing help. We try to help them as the best we can. So, I mean, Robert, I mean, you see what's going on. You were this close. <laughs> <laughs> this close to winning. Thanks for reminding me, Roseanne. I'm I appreciate sorry. that. <laughs> but, I mean, y you just want to say to the people now, you're, you're kind of picking up the slack in the neighborhood without even having the title. I'm the hardest working non-elected you ever met, but that's not the point. There are a lot of people out there who are really working hard and trying to make a difference in our communities and proud of that. And I think it's going to be interesting watching how the future unfolds because by every expectation, he should be expelled. We're not, I wouldn't predict it yet. But we have to keep the pressure on to make sure he's expelled 
and then it moves into a potentially a special election. For his part, Mr. Santos said, quote, is it a disgusting politicized smear that shows the depths of how low our federal government has sunk? Everyone who participated in this grave miscarriage of justice should all be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> I know you have to read that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me that on the card. But do they, do you see, I know earlier there were all those reports about, look, the Republicans wanted to keep that slim majority that they had. They had different things that they wanted to do. Sure. But it seems like there is momentum, not just from Republicans, but also some Democrats who didn't vote right. in that way the last time around, that right. people are already changing their votes after seeing some of the initial findings in this I report. think it's very true. You know, two-thirds, you need two-thirds of a vote for expulsion. That's a big hurdle. It should be a very demanding hurdle before you expel a, an elected it's official. It's hard because, I mean, there's only been five in the course of history, and three of those were because of the Confederacy. Right. I mean, three because of the Confederacy, <laughs> two because of criminality, and then there's George Santos. Um, and, <laughs> and in fact, I think, what you, I think we're moving towards expulsion. I think, it's, I think it will happen. Happen, but he may very well resign in an effort to cut a deal. Okay, before. so if he does resign, how does that work then? Well, the way uh, it works is uh, upon the date of his, I've become an expert on this recently, okay. upon the date of his vacancy, the governor has 10 days to call for a special election uh, from the moment the vacancy occurs. And then the special election takes place within 60 to 80 days. She can't just appoint someone. No, she couldn't. Mm. Uh, well, well, <laughs> so are you going to throw your hat back in the ring? You know, right now, my focus is building a bipartisan coalition. Robert, you're talking to us, I and you're throwing your hat back in the ring. Really Rosanna here. She's not <laughs> exactly. Believe me, I, I got, let me tell you something. <laughs> you always have to be straight with Rosanna. The truth is, when there's time for that political discussion, we're going to have it. And I'll be certainly cluing you in on that for sure. All right, Robert Zimmerman, thank you so much for coming on uh, and talking with us. Thanks, Chloe. But don't I get to sing Native New Yorker now? If you want to stay around, I'm staying around. Absolutely. Okay, good, <laughs> sir. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay.